Hey, if you're considering cataract surgery in 2025, these are the lenses that you should know about and ask your doctor if they're right for you. My name is Dr. Josh Cohen and I'm an ophthalmologist in South Florida and I've been doing cataract surgery for a long time. I wanted to update the video and kind of talk about some newer lenses that provide some other additional opportunities. So the first lens I wanna talk about today is the Bosch & Lam NV lens. What I like about the NV is that it has no coloration to it. It is basically a neutral color, very transparent lens. So for patients in graphic design or in art fields or are doing color grading, it's a really good option. And I've chosen specifically for patients for that reason. I've had patients come back to me the day after surgery be like, things are just so bright. Almost things take on like a bluish look because they don't have that natural yellow coloration that they might've been used to as their cataracts have developed over time. It's a great lens for distance and near. And the starburst effect and halo effects are minimal in that lens, but they still can be present in some patients. They also are fairly neutral in terms of their asphericity. So they're very good for patients who have not had previous refractive surgery, and even for patients who, you know, might be even in the post hyperopic section of post refractive corneal measurements that could be good in those patients as well. So it's a good lens used in a variety of circumstances uh, and something that you should definitely be aware of. It also treats astigmatism, which is excellent. Now piggybacking off of that lens is the, also from b &L line, which is the Aspire lens. And this is a extended depth of focus lens that functions as, again, almost like a comparable lens to the Johnson & Johnson eye hands. But I find it gives a little bit more reading vision in that mid range than the eye hands does in my experience, and is also a great lens. This is a neutral aspheric lens, so it has a really nice depth of focus with at the expense of some contrast sensitivity in some patients. But I feel like it's great lens, particularly if you want to consider monovision with one eye for distance, one eye reading. I really like the Aspire uh, lens as well. Now, the Invista Aspire is a great lens and it also treats astigmatism but another lens that works in a similar vein as an extended of the focus lens but does not treat astigmatism is the Rainer EMV. I did talk about that in a previous video and I've been using that more and more as well in certain situations. Again, another great option if you're looking at monovision and if you don't have an astigmatism. Johnson Johnson has also come out with an updated multifocal lens that is the next generation synergy lens but it behaves in my opinion a little bit better so this is a lens that is a diffractive multifocal but it also has an edof component as well so it's a lens that can be for the surgeons out there targeted neutral first minus sometimes even you can go first plus in terms of the power selection and it gives a great wide field of view with good color delivery minimal contrast uh, degradation and very good low light performance compared to some other competitors. Um, I found that the Odyssey is uh, really a fantastic lens. I've had very few complaints with it since it's uh, been in market and since I've been using it personally. And uh, it's really become one of my favorites. It also is a little bit more on the negative aspheric side as Johnson Johnson typically is. So that's something that you can also consider for patients who've had LASIK, but you wanna do that with caution because again, after LASIK, sphere collaboration does interact with these lenses in sometimes unpredictable ways, but it is a fantastic lens. It is a great competitor to the Alcom Panoptics, which is still an excellent choice. Now, the coloration of the Odyssey lens is kind of in between the Envy and the Panoptics. It's not quite as yellow. Patients concerned about blue light still has perfect blue light performance and UV performance as all these lenses do, but it is a more of a champagne color. It's less of that kind of, uh, you know, almost yellow coloration that some of the Alcon varieties have. Uh, it's not quite, I feel like, as bright in its transparency as the uh, Bosch & Lam line, but it is something just to be aware of if that's something that's important to you. Moving in a different direction, there is a lens that's been on the market now for about a year, and that is made by Clearview. It is a segmented bifocal called the Clearview 3. All the diffractive lenses, whether it's the Panoptics or the Synergy or the Envy or the Odyssey, they all kind of look like this. They all kind of have these segmented rings and each of these has different focal lengths that allow you to see kind of full range of vision. And they do unfortunately cause some glare and starburst. And some people describe it like this. So if you're looking at kind of what the experience might be for certain patients, an extended depth of focus lens can kind of create this kind of glow circle around the lights. And the diffractive lenses that kind of have these rings actually kind of create these striations, these like starburst patterns that some people can find quite distracting. Now the incidence of this is pretty low. I usually counsel patients maybe about 10%, but generally it is a good lens um, and they're all very good lenses, but it is something to be aware of that that could be distracting if you do a lot of night driving or if you do a lot of activity in low light. But moving in the 
other direction, you have now what's called a refractive bifocal or the Clearview 3. This is made by LensTech. This is a lens that I've been using now for the last, uh, say about six months now. Um, and it's a really good lens, but is a little finicky in terms of its insertion. And that's because of how it's designed. Instead of it having rings like this, it actually has a split in the middle, about a 60-40 split between the distance section and the reading section. And the delineation are these two very subtle little prismatic fractures in the lens that basically split the light near the center. No matter where you're looking, up or bottom, whatever is in focus, near or far is going to be clear. The main point about this lens is when you're inserting it, you want to make sure that what are called the Purkinje reflexes, which is the circle of light that you see when you are kind of implanting the lens, you want that Purkinje reflex to be right in the center of the lens and hitting the distance portion, not the reading portion. But nonetheless, in order to position it right, the surgeon has to kind of rotate it to get it in the right position, and that can be a little bit challenging. If it's out of position, you're going to get a little striation of light. You'll get kind of a split in the lights that you're looking at um, that will create a little bit of a distracting kind of flare that some people can describe. And depending on the angle of the lens, the flare will reflect that particular angle. So that's something that some people can describe, but generally, patients have been really happy with this lens. It performs great in low light, it gives great reading and great distance, but not so great intermediate. So if you do a lot of computer work, this might not be the best choice for you. But if you're looking for like really good clarity up close and far away, uh, like, you know, looking at, you know, small detail work, like if you do needling or if you are an illustrator or if you're looking at something on your phone up close, very good lens. But as a standalone option, this does not treat any astigmatism. And another lens that kind of, again, sits in its own category is the Aptera 8 lens, also made by Bosch and Lam. It's technically a diffractive optical principle that, again, allows light to only pass through the very central aperture and make sure that only those light beams are in focus and the light outside of that is not. The nice thing about the Aptera is that it basically allows corneas that are very irregular, patients who've had previous refractive surgery, patients who've had scarring from infections, patients who've had trauma to the eye, where the cornea might not be normal in its shape. The Aptera kind of eliminates a lot of that uh, anomalous light performance. It kind of just focuses the light in the center. And, you know, sometimes the distance clarity is not perfect. So as a dominant eye, it might not be the best choice, but for your non-dominant eye, if you're looking for in a range of focus, let's say you've had previous surgery, neither eye might be perfect, but you just don't want to wear reading glasses. You know, choosing a monofocal for distance or uh, a regular toric lens, monofocal toric for distance, plus this lens in your non-dominant eye targeted a little bit closer to reading, maybe minus three quarters to minus one diopters. It's a really great option because it gives you that extra range of about a diopter and a half to two diopters of an extended read on top of that. Now, if I'm counseling a patient and I'll be like, look, you want to not wear glasses, you know, any of these three lenses might be appropriate how do I choose between them? Well, then it really depends on your individual corneal and axial length measurements. When I look at your particular eye, what does it look like to me? What's the spherical aberration? What is the A constant of each of these lenses? In other words, how close to your target refraction can I get because there's subtle variations in how each of these lenses are manufactured and that's very brand dependent. So when we are choosing these lenses, we use formulas and nomograms, different algorithms to kind of calculate what lens is appropriate and some manufacturers might get closer to that mark than others, and that might be the tipping point of choosing one over the other. If you're thinking about cataract surgery in 2025 and beyond, rest assured you've got a lot of wonderful options out there, and hopefully you'll find one that's right for you. So if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about the eye, ocular health, or refractive surgery, uh, check out this video here that YouTube recommends, as well as my previous video here on other refractive surgery and cataract surgery options. Thanks for your time. See you in the next one.